The cuirassiers were the French heavy cavalry. Now the boots, they're not complete boots. They used to wear ankle boots with tall leather leggings on top. Now these are original cuirassiers leggings, but they could be from after the First World War because they, were, they still use them to the present day for ceremonial use. And as with most other cavalry, they always wore breeches. They have the red breeches, but they have a blue stripe down the side to show that they were the, they were the cavalry. Then one of the main weapons is the sword. This is the cuirassiers sword. It's quite a large, heavy weapon. The blade's almost 39 inches long. It's quite a, a heavy piece of equipment. The cuirassiers get their name from the metal breastplate that's called a cuirass. Underneath, they have a waistcoat that's just to protect the uniform from getting rubbed by the metal. It comes in two halves. The front part is a lot thicker metal than the rear, but even so, it was completely out of date for the, by the time the First World War started. This is the Carassius sword. I got this from Wilson's 55 military auctions a few years ago. It was advertised as a replica, but it's got stampings on the hilt there. There's Ruston stains on the blade. There's actually writing on the blade. I don't know. So whether it's original or not, I don't know. There you go. The plume at the back of the helmet was made of horsehair. If you look down the middle near the top there, there's a, there's a plaited section. They quite often did that. Then there's the weapon they carried. It's a carbine. Now this is actually an artillery carbine. The Carassias had their own special one. It didn't have any cheek cheek piece on the butt stock. And there's a leather piece on the end of the butt as well. That was to stop the rifle slipping off the breastplate when they're firing it. And according to Ian McCollum from the YouTube channel ForgottenWeapons.com, there's only a, ever a few thousand Karasia carbines made and there are actually only around six left in existence. So to have a, a original one of those is pretty rare. But although this is a just an ordinary artillery carbine, it is a bit unique and has a bit of a story with it. I'll tell you about that later. Another item the, the cavalry carried was the water canteen. This is uh, slightly different than the, what the ordinary infantry would wear. Then we have the helmet. This is just for an ordinary trooper. It's not for an officer, it's very elaborate. I mean, it hadn't changed much since the time of Napoleon and it wouldn't have looked out of place, the Battle of Waterloo. And when the war first started, they did try and put cloth covers on to just hide the shiny metal work, but it was this soon, by about 1915, all this, was, all this kind of uniform was done away with. It was completely inappropriate. This is the Berthier Carbine. It's the 1890 model. This one's actually dated 1892. It was loaded with a three round clip and when the last round was fired, the empty clip would fall out of that hole at the bottom. And although this looks like a basic carbine, it is quite unusual because in 1916, the French army recalled all, most of these and added a, an extra fixed, they put a fixed magazine there that held five rounds and they put extra woodwork across there to protect the metalwork. So, this is quite rare really because it's just as it would have been made in 1892. And another unusual thing about this, if you look there, there's some Arabic writing. And luckily for me, my stepson was at university a few years ago and he met and kept in touch with a, an Egyptian young lady called Lobna. And she very kindly translated it for me. And it basically means this is the property of Sultan Ali Dinar Zakaria. And when you look him up, he was the last Sultan of Darfur, which is now in Sudan. In 1916, he decided he was going to support the Ottoman Turks in the First World War. So the Allies weren't very impressed with that. So they sent a combined force of British and Egyptian soldiers down to have a word with him. And during one of the battles that ensued, 
the Sultan was killed and he was the last from then on there were no more Sultans of Darfur. But today one of his palaces in Sudan has been turned into a museum and I would think really I would like to send this back there if I could you know and that's where it belongs it's you know you're long to, it, with, when it says it, it was his property it didn't mean that he actually owned this rifle he had that inscription on all the weapons of all his soldiers so it wasn't actually personally owned by him but it was owned by his army so but trouble is that with the Sudan there's a bit of a civil war going on there at the moment so I don't know whether that'll ever get that back there or not but there you go Louis, monte avec moi derrière Papy, en avance. 